This is a quick video, just kind of like test tips for uh, the Geometry 1118, both the self-test and the pace test. And I have it on good authority from uh, Mr. Root, who has been teaching the geometry paces for a long time to students in his school, that uh, the, the, the math part of the self-test and pace test are not really that hard, using the formulas. Most students trip up because they don't realize just how much content there is that needs to be memorized, okay? So if you have been, you know, with each checkup, just doing a little bit and getting it right, that doesn't mean you are ready to do the self-test and pace test. In fact, right now, I just want you to look at the self-test, okay? Go to page 44, turn the page and look at page 45, look at all those formulas, okay? And you have to be able to match them up to what you are finding the area or volume or surface area or, you know, uh, lateral surface area, total surface area, all those things. So you need to keep that straight. Uh, make flashcards, perhaps. Have someone quiz you on them. But you must have them memorized. And I tell you, I'm telling you right now, the PACE test is identical. They have the formula there. You're not going to have to write it out by memory. The formula is there. You will have to match them correctly. Now, the good thing is you have all the formulas then right there on the test, as long as you can keep straight which one goes to which, because then there's a lot of problem solving on both the self-test and the pace test. And so if you know with confidence which formula and you can apply it, okay, to the particular problem, then you can just plug in the numbers and uh, the test itself should be hopefully pretty easy. I want to point out one thing, and that is there sometimes students get confused with the difference between lateral surface area and total surface area. So let me illustrate this with two figures here. First of all, a cylinder. This would be kind of like a, uh, a Coke can or um, oatmeal, you know, sometimes comes in a canister like this. And if you were to cut off the lid on this end and cut off the lid on that end, you would have two circles, right? And then the tube part that's left when you cut the ends off would be a rectangle. You see that? So just the side is called the lateral surface area. And in this case, this before we unwrapped it was the circumference, which was pi times the diameter. Okay? And then this is obviously the height. But then, if we're asked to find the total surface area, we take, the, we take this lateral surface area, but then we have to add the area of a circle, which you know this is pi r squared. And you have two of these circles. You have one on one lid from each end. So to get the total surface area, we have to add all three of these together. All right? So keep that straight. Same thing here with a uh, pyramid. Lateral surface area would just be the four triangles, the area of the four triangles. You add those up, and you have the lateral surface area. But to get the total surface area, you also have to add the area of the bottom. I always picture this like a tent, right? So these are the sides of the tent, but inside you have the floor of the tent. So to have the total surface area, you have to include the floor with the walls in order for you to have total surface area. Okay, I think uh, the hardest part, my understanding on this test, the hardest part really is just the memorization. There's a lot you need to have, have confident in your memory so that then you can apply it to do the multiple choice. And if you're confident with that, the formulas are right there. Apply it to solving the problems. Make sure you have a calculator on the test. Uh, show your work to show your ratios and setting up the problem so if you get one wrong, your uh, supervisor can go back and see where you made your mistake. And uh, I hope you do well.